So this is a 65 year old woman with an annular plaque on the left side. Okay, so here we go. Sorry, this one's got a little bit of wrinkling um, in the tissue, but I think it's a pretty nice example and a really good learning lesson. So 65 year old woman left side. So is anyone here? This I think this piece is the better piece to go with. Anyone have ideas for what this might be? Interstitial GA. That really looks like it, right? It's annular, it's on the trunk in this case. And I just showed you two palisaded granulomatous things. And here we've got cells that are trickling between the collagen, just like, in fact, I didn't put it in there, but what this actually came in as was rule out GA. That's what it was, I just am intuiting or, or inferring that there were annular lesions, but it was sent in as rule out GA. But let me point something out, as we go in closer, Boy, the cells do. This is this is such a good case because it shows how easily you could get burned. Something about the cells to me looked a little weird cytologically. I mean, sure, they kind of histiocytoid looking, but as I looked around, I saw little tiny things like this, little tiny circles that have blue stuff in them. And let me see if I can find the area again. Ah, there we go. There are areas where the cells look more like very round nuclei, and in some areas, they kind of started to clump together or string along in a linear kind of fashion like this. If I showed you this area, oh, and then there are mitoses, although again, mitoses in GA, no problem. I see that all the time. Does this, uh, if I told you, okay, it's not GA, but the reason I'm showing this is because it would be so easy to mistake this for GA especially because it was sent in with a clinical from a dermatologist of rule out GA. But what if I just showed you this picture, what other things would be in your differential? Anyone? Metastatic breast carcinoma. Yes, indeed. So let's see if I can find the slide that shows, and this is the site of keratin seven. Blazing positive. You can see it's staining the eccrine coils here and strongly staining these tumor cells, which look quite histiocytoid, I, I admit. And I think that's a that's the kind of treacherous pitfall. The, the single filing here is very easy to see, right? But it can kind of have an overlapping appearance with that trickly look that you see in interstitial GA. One thing I'd point out is that Usually interstitial, like I mentioned earlier, interstitial granuloma annulari tends to be a pattern I just see focally at the edge of more well-formed granuloma annulari. And it's quite rare in my experience to have like a big sample of skin where all I see is interstitial pattern GA without any necrobiotic palisading mucin filled granulomas. So that that's one clue here is we've got this huge slab of skin and all this trickling interstitial pattern, but no actual like good necrobiotic palisading pattern to go with it, which is what I would expect in a, in a GA with this big a sample. I would expect I'd find some areas usually. But here, thankfully, and I, I can't remember exactly what it was, but some area of the slide reminded me of breast cancer. And I thought, let's do a keratin. And it was positive. And then when I talked to the treating physician, turns out the patient actually had known stage four breast cancer, but they, they had kind of forgotten to mention that. And they really didn't think that it looked like breast cancer, and by left side, what, what we're really dealing with is the area near the, the mastectomy site from where the breast cancer had been uh, removed a few years ago. So side, when I, I always joke when people say side, oh, is it the left side or, the, oh, okay, I guess it's not the right side. Because I mean, what's that mean, like half of your body? I know that what people mean is flank instead of side, but sometimes precision with our words regarding the anatomic site can actually be pretty meaningful. And this is why I, in, and I, I hope you all know this already, is encouraged taking photographs. I cannot tell you how many times I've, I've looked at the description, I've looked at the slide, I've thought, oh, you know, I think this is good. And then I look at the clinical photograph and I'm like, backspace, all the stuff I just wrote in my report because there's no way it can be what I thought it was. All it took was one look at a clinical photo. And what I had envisioned in my mind from the clinical description was very, very different from what I was seeing. And it wasn't that the description was necessarily bad. It's just the, the whole picture worth a thousand words thing is so very true. And it's especially applicable to uh, dermatology and dermatopathology. 
And also the clinical history really important. So this is just hits home. I know how very busy you guys are in clinic as dermatologists. And I know that sometimes there's not the availability to always mention everything that's relevant, but knowing if a patient has a cancer history, especially if they have a bad tumor, like a thick melanoma, or they have a known metastatic cancer, that can be really, really important for us to know if you happen to have access to that information. And I realize that as dermatologists, depending on your, the clinic setting you go into, sometimes you are not given that information. I've seen many times once I've talked to the dermatologist that they were as shocked as I was because the patient had been treated in another institution for their cancer and then just came to the derm because of a mole or a rash or a whatever thing that they thought was a nothing and didn't realize it was something actually related to their, their previous cancer. So I, um, I, I always want to know if that patient has a, a bad cancer, a metastatic cancer, if they've had radiation or chemo, that can be hugely important to know. Um, in fact, I, it's a lecture for another time, but I, I recommend all dermatologists to include on their intake forms the question, not just do you have a history of cancer, mm -hmm. have you ever received radiation therapy? Because uh, radiation therapy can obviously predispose people to certain things like angiosarcoma, and there have been plenty of times where knowing that history made a difference. So here was, I think, a very treacherous example of, um, of a metastatic or, or local recurrence. I never did quite figure out if this was skin met or direct. Oh, I'm sorry. I take that back. I think this was more likely a skin met because of the pattern of growth, right? You can see it's really confined to the skin here rather than direct extension. So, um, yeah, and this was one where we really could have, uh, could have made a big mistake here and missed this, but thankfully we, we sorted it out in time. So that was, um, a metastatic breast carcinoma mimicking both microscopically and clinically mimicking granuloma annularis.